Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we'll be doing a very simple type of pop a fluid simulation. I'm going to sim this out so you can get a better idea of what's going on and then we'll go into the simulation itself. So let's get started. First we'll just let this sim out. Alrighty so let's play this back. So as you can see this basic plot fluid simulation gets sucked into the air and projected forward. I'm cutting off the um, basically the particle life of the particles at a certain point because I didn't want the simulation to go on forever. So let's go over that right now. So as you can see, we have two different elements in our scene. One is bowls and one is fluid. For the bowls, you can see that it's bringing in these bowls. You can also see that um, it's high, the highlighting method of when you select them is a little bit different in Houdini 19 than it was in 18. It has very outlined instead of turning very yellow overall. So you can see the different selection methods here. If I hover my mouse over it, it turns yellow. If I take it off, we just get the outlines. So I'm going to go into my fluid, and this is pretty much where the main simulation happens. So let's start up at the top. I'm going to start with the sphere. As you can see, I've um, relative reference the radius over into the y and z axis. So they are the same. I then reference the columns with the rows. So there's about 50. And the uniform scale is 1. The next thing I have is a null. Down here, I have a transform. What I am doing with this transform is just making this little um, sphere smaller. This is going to be our emission object. I've also translated it up negative 0 0.0. Over here, if we go back to our null, I have another transform. This transform will help our shape become our collision object. So, you can see that I've played with the scale. And I've kind of flattened this up top to make it into an oval. The next thing I've done is clipped it. I'm keeping all primitives below the plane, and the distance I'm not really changing. The next thing I'm doing is adding the poly extrude. What I'm doing is just kind of adding some thickness to this bowl. So if we zoom in, you can see if I go back to the clip, we have a very flat plane. If you go to the poly extrude, you can see more polygons and thickness. I'm also putting the back and the front. The next thing I'm doing is just transforming it and giving it some rotation. Then I'm subdividing it. And then I have put down a merge right here. What this merge is doing is just merging these two other transformations I've added up to onto the bowl. So if I go to the bowl here, and I'll just ghost this merge, you can see I've transformed one bowl, to, this bowl to go down to its bottom, and I've added another transform over here, where I've transformed this bowl over to the right here. I've then merged everything together, and suddenly we have three bowls in the scene. These bowls are going to be our collision object, so as you can see, I've added a null that says out bowls. This out bowls will also connect to the bowls on the level here. So going back in, let's talk about our forces. So heading over here to our circle, you can kind of see that I have rotated and transformed a circle to match up with the three bowls on the scene. I've given it a center of 0 0.44 and a uniform scale of 2.36, divisions, 50, and etc. It's an open arc. I'm going to turn on my points so we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. So going back to our transform, I'm just transforming just a little bit so it's a little bit more of an oval and so that it's balancing off the bottom of the bowl over here. The next thing I'm doing is converting this to a line so we can have the rest length. And then I'm blasting away part of the circle that I don't need. So when the water comes down through the bowls right here, it will be sucked up by this little curved force that we're going to create and go into the air. The next thing I've put down is a pop net. I've connected this circle with the second input of the pop net and the emitter into the first. 
So before we go any further, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create a collision object in Houdini. So first thing you'll need to do after you put down your pop net, we'll dive inside so you can get a better idea of what your collision object will look like after you click it on the shelf. So as you can see, it was thinking. So you can see that in my scene of uh, for this dynamic network, I'm using a static object. This static object is bringing in the bowls. So one way to add a static object into your DOPnet is to go over here, select the output of your colliding object, go to collisions, and click static object. It will then take you to the object level. Then you have the option of selecting whatever you'd like to be your static object, clicking enter, and you'll see that the DOPnet has now thought about the changes you made by turning the slider orange. It doesn't seem to have want to listen to me, so I'm going to do that again. Selecting a static object, going back to the beginning, ah, there we go. So you can see now that it's created a secondary static object right here. It's also created one of, of the modernized 2D19 file caches, and you can also see that it is empty. So now after diving inside, you can see that it's now created a secondary collision object right here. So I'm just going to delete the new one because we don't actually need it too much. So diving inside this, I'm going to delete the other one because we don't need it. There we go. So as you can see, there are two things going on besides our collision objects. One being how we're applying the forces and one of how we're bringing in the points and creating the points. So the first, oh, that's not good. Go back. <laughs> first thing I've done is kind of added a gravity node right here, right after my collision object. The next thing I've done is gone up to pop source, use first context geometry and scatter onto surfaces. I've then gone to birth it make, made that dollar uh, $f over under 55, so after 55 this will stop emitting. I've then linked this impulse activation with a relative reference by copying the parameter and pasting it into constant activation. I've then given this a high particle count of over 700,000 particles and a life expectancy of 4. I've then added some variation onto how I want the particles to move. So I added a swirl size of 0.14 and an amplitude of 0.2. The next thing I've done is added some more noise of 2.2 on the amplitude and a larger swirl size. I've then added negative 5 in the y-axis. The next thing I've done is added a pop curve force, which is connected to our second input. So this is on Segu's second context geometry. Ignore mass, treat as wind, and we're playing with the max influence radius, as well as the follow scale, the section scale, the orbit scale, and that's pretty much it. We've also played with the global forces of how we want the curve to handle the fall off of our particles. Down here, we haven't really played with too much collision object behavior other than switch this over to enable collision detection, add hit attributes, and then response, make them slide. Then I've removed the bounds from the particles and also cranked up the friction or cranked or lowered the friction. And that's pretty much what's going on inside here. Jumping up to the surface, I then deleted um, everything but the stream source first input. So delete non-selected. And then I've cached everything out. So if I click on my cache, the thing that should play back is this. Don't worry about the stepping, you won't see that in the fluid too much. But you can see it pour out of the bowls and go downwards. The next thing I've added is a particle fluid surface. This is going to mesh our particles. So looking at this, you can see that the particle separation is lowered. We have a lowered voxel scale. Influence radius is cranked up. Everything else is pretty much the same. The next thing I've done is convert this to polygons, and I gave it some color. 
So if we look at this and we turn off our points, we should see some fluid going down through the bowls. And that's pretty much it of how you'd create this little basic pop fluid simulation. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Kate and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.